Hey friends, welcome or welcome back. It's Laura with Laura B. Floss 2 here once again. Let's talk about our bloom quilt along. So this week we are working on block three and four. And when I say this week, I really mean like starting November 19th. So this is the Thanksgiving week here in the U.S. If you're not out, if you're not in the U.S., then you don't have to worry about Thanksgiving. Um, so anyway, I'm working ahead just a little bit because like I said last week, um, I'm going to try to post these videos like Thursday or Friday, the week of uh, before, just so you guys can get any tips and tricks that I might run into when I'm doing my blocks. So um, as we did last time, I the first thing I'm going to do is just grab my bags, which I've done already, and I'm going to layer up my um, shapes on the design boards and then set my backgrounds aside to make sure those get pressed before I put anything on them. So let's get layering. Okay, so when I actually say layering, I just mean we're matching things up, right? So here's our background. Obviously, that's going to need pressed before we put our things on it. Um, and then, let's see, it looks like we have a whole bunch of leaves and a couple big shapes and a couple little shapes. So here are the red and the pink go to these big ovals. So we'll turn those upside down. The yellows go to the smaller ovals. And wow, look at this. This is, they're going to be so cute. It's cute. So those go right there. And then all of these little green doodads are our leaves. Those are going to be some smaller leaves. So we're going to bring in a couple tricks for those. And then those go there. So that's block three. Now, block four. All right, let's see. Let's grab our bag, grab everything out. Doodly do. Well, I say that all the time with the dog when I'm outside. We're playing in the evening. One of the, I don't know. Do you guys have dogs? Do you say silly things with your dogs? I do. I admit it. All right, so here's the green, green leaves. Bloop. Yellow circle. Bloop. And then this is kind of a cool shape. So I'll, uh, Give you some tips and tricks about that shape too when i'm sewing it and when i'm turning it all right next up sewing machine okay so i always like starting with my smaller shapes first because then i feel like the longer i go along the easier it gets so we're going to start with one of these leaves and i'm going to leave them together if i can if not i'll cut them out but for right now this will be fine and I am using my piecing foot this week. Last week I used my open toe, but this week I'm going to use my piecing foot, mostly because it's on the machine. I have decreased my stitch length to 1.8. Let's get sewing. One really cool thing with some of these fabrics in your shapes is that you can kind of do a little bit of like a fussy cut. Um, I know that these flowers are going to like be like this. The oval's going to be laying down on its side. So I am going to try to place my shape on here so I can have one of those cute little flowers right in the center of my oval. And I'll admit, sometimes I do this and sometimes I don't. That's all we have for block three, so moving on to block four. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about circles. Um, I had a couple of people comment and say that they have really a problem with circles, and how do you do your circles, and how do you get that to just swing around there? Um, it takes some practice, but I'm just going to tell you that you basically are just putting some pressure on 
one side of the shape. And because of, I don't know, physics and science and all that kind of stuff, it just works that you can start at one point on the circle and then you'll find your, you'll find your spot. You just kind of put your hand on there and let the fabric slide underneath as you turn that piece. And you will have to like, you know, pick up your hand and, and move it from time to time, depending on how big the circle is. But if you just have the right amount of pressure on there, you can guide that fabric right around there and stay on that curve really well. Um, like I said, it takes some practice, but it definitely can be done and it will help you get a more accurate, smooth finish to your circles. So just practice on that a little bit. If you're having problems with smoothness, um, and I'm sure you can get it. Same concept on these on these um, curves like this on the leaves. Just adding a little pressure onto the fabric and letting your hand help guide that around. All right, for our last piece. Now this is the one that has all the points. So when I get to the inner point, I take one stitch and then I come back out. Outer points don't get that extra stitch, inner points do. It just helps me when I'm turning. And it does take one more second because instead of just being able to pivot, you have to make that one little stitch. But it helps me when I'm turning. All right, there's our pieces for block four. Now it's time to cut them out and flip them out. I went to an evening sit and sew last night with some friends from the local quilt group and it was super fun. Could have been because I took a little Yeti of cocktail with me, um, but mostly because company was one was wonderful. So that was super fun. One of my friends is working on Prairie Meadow right now and she is progressing quite well. Um, I'm not really sure which block she was working on, but she had some smaller pieces and they were kind of, kind of fiddly. And she was asking me for some, you know, some tips or whatever. And, and I was like, you know, I, if, if that was mine and I was home, I would get my tweezers out because sometimes it's just easiest to stick a little piece, stick those tweezers in there and, um, pull on the fabric and pull it right out. So if you have smaller pieces and you're having problems getting it turned out, um, just kind of think about what you might have lying around at your house that would help you turn that out. Uh, another thing that I told her that um, I do sometimes is I have this um, turn it all tool and they're really cool. They're like PVC pipes and they have a stick in the, that you stick down the middle of that PVC pipe on the outside. And um, they help you turn out like, you know, tubes for like bags and things like that. But if you have a flower that has some petals on it that are um, long and skinny, I would, you know, mention that you could probably take that turn it all tool and do the same thing for them and just save yourself a few headaches, you know, anything that you can do to make it easier and to get um, your stuff turned out and then smooth it out and press it and you're good to go. I'm going to continue cutting these shapes out and then um, I will give you some tips if I have any as I'm moving along and then we'll just keep progressing on block three and four. Okay, now on this um, star flower shape, it um, has some concave areas 
And so I am going to cut a couple of these and then show you what I'm doing that might help you when you go to do yours and turn it out. Okay, so um, I'm rounding those points, right? And then I'm also cutting down to, but not through your seam there in each concave area. Um, so that's kind of the only two things you need to make sure you're doing. Just make sure you're cut, clipping that down. And um, I like to kind of, you know, uh, trim off a lot of excess fabric around those outer points because the less fabric you have out there, the less fabric you're going to have bunch up on your, um, on the inside when you go to turn it. You get a smoother finish and you'll be much happier with the results. All right, so I'm gonna get these turned out. I have most of my shapes turned out, but there's a couple of them that I thought, well, I'll just kind of do those um, for a couple of little tricks. So we have these little bitty leaves, right? And I have cut the interfacing on those. And for me, I, it's just easiest for me just to get started by kind of taking my fingernails in there my fingernails are not very long, so don't think you have to have long ones. Um, and kind of just flipping that back around. Then I'll take my two-point turner and I point, I poke that point out, and then I run it along the interfacing side of your shape. That way you have an interfacing and a fabric layer protecting you from going through that seam. Keep running that around to smooth it out. And I kind of check it on the other side, see what I think. Now you can note, you'll notice that that point is not very good. And I mentioned this in the last video, but it's never a bad thing to repeat um, a good tip. I take my stylus and stick it right down in there and kind of dig that point out and right on the seam, I just kind of give it a little wiggle. And that way I have that really good point for my leaf. So let's see that again. I have one leaf left to do. And then we also have that big flower for um, block four. So first we're going to use our fingernails and our fingers, stick our little finger in there and flip that around. If you have a kid around, you can trust them not to rip your stuff apart. Their little fingers will probably be even better at that. And then run that two point turner around. Remember on the interfacing side, not on the fabric side. Poke that point out just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of hard for me to do this and make sure you can see too. And then take that stylus and I'm kind of taking it on the side a little bit and um, just poking through and digging that out and giving it a little tug tug. And then we have our point. All right, so we have all of our leaves done. The only thing we have left to do is block four's um, big star flower. So I have these really nice sharp Fisker scissors are pointed on the end and I saw so I'll just kind of drag it on my interfacing and then cut. And this is a big piece so it won't be too bad to flip. It's just those points we'll have to work on. And they're not too bad either because those are pretty um, soft points, I guess is what I would say. And if they're not super pointy, that's okay because, you know, we don't want anybody getting cut on our flower anyway. That's what roses are for. Those thorns get you every time. All right. And it's so satisfying just to start seeing that star shape coming out. Work our way all the way around. Now, if I wanted to, I could take my stiletto and I could um, pull out each one of those points, but I'm just going to give it a good little poke with my two point turner. And then I'm going to flip it over and just kind of see. Now I also will take these two points and kind of give them a little tug apart from each other. That just kind of loosens up that seam. And remember we put an extra stitch in on those, um, on these concave areas. 
so it shouldn't be too bad so that's going to lay pretty good and flat um, all right so the next thing we need to do for these blocks is to press all of our shapes and then we can um, press our backgrounds and then start gluing them down so I'm just going to press these and I will catch up with you when I go to start gluing them down because you're just pressing. You can handle that. It's time to lay out our blocks. So I have brought my cutting guide and my block pieces over here to my table and I'm just going to lay those out in um, the way that I want them and then we'll glue them into place and then we can stitch them down. Okay, so here are um, our pieces and our background for block three. And I also grabbed three of my um, bias tapes that I'm using up. And I just need to cut a couple uh, pieces for stems. Now remember, our stems are going to be sewn into, or my stems are going to be sewn into the um, seam for the block. So I don't have to worry about pressing the ends under, which is nice. The extra string off of there so there's one C or one stem rather and then I'm going to use a solid for the other one which I don't use there's, I don't remember which I think that may have been Prairie Meadow that I had all the solid stems all the prints were so pretty all right so there's the other stem I'm sure that probably went out of camera when I was cutting those, but that's okay. You can find those measurements on um, her blog, and I'll put the links to the, the blocks um, on her blog down below. All right, so I'm going to turn this just a little bit so it's, so it's kind of straight to me. And I'm just going to start by kind of laying these pieces out, and then I will decide... Um, If they're too tall or too short or what's going on with them so that's my tall flower now remember you also want to make sure that you're staying within your measurement for the block so our blocks are going to be eight and a half when we cut them down so I'm going to make sure that I you know take a measurement on that before I get too crazy with my glue And, you know, you can move these flowers closer or further apart. It's really up to you. I think I'm going to do like kind of like that. I think I'm going to move this one down a little bit. Give it a little more interest. It looks like this one gets two leaves. And this one gets three. Just switch. Oh, that'd be cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right. So that's kind of what I'm going to do for my block, but I am going to check those measurements before I glue anything down. And I am good to go on my measurements with the block. So I'm going to get my tacky glue. Now I use Eileen's tacky glue. If you want a more in depth, um, tutorial over putting your blocks together and all the different um, steps that you go through make sure you check out block one and two for this sew along because I definitely did a lot more in-depth um, discussion and um, I went through all the steps a lot in a lot more detail than I am now The idea is you're doing the whole quilt with me and if you are then hopefully you watch the video for block one and two now I definitely could get a ruler out and make sure this stem is perfectly straight but I'm just going to wing it. 
Don't forget, you're the boss of your quilt. And so am I. All right. So here's block three. Whoops. <laughs> it is going to be off to the side drawing. And then I will work on laying out block four. All right. Now, block four, uh, this flower is centered. So when I was ironing my pressing, my background, I pressed it in half. So I have a nice um, line right here up the middle. So I can just put some glue dots on that. Oh, and if you watch block one, you know what I'm doing wrong already. I'll fix that in just a second. I like building my blocks on the back of the design board because that way if any glue goes through, it doesn't get glued to the fleece. It gets glued to um, the foam board and you can just kind of wiggle, wiggle and it comes right off. Okay, so this yellow circle goes right in the center of this blue flower. Now I could measure it out or I could eyeball it and I bet you know already that I'm going to eyeball it. Now remember when I'm gluing, I kind of strategically place my dots of glue so they are um, not going to be in the way when I try to um, sew the other layers on. And that looks pretty good. I should have checked that before I glued it, but I didn't. That's all right. It worked out that time. Just don't get in the habit of it. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's a bad habit too. Kind of bang that glue on the table when I'm done with it to put the cap on. It's kind of my way of saying finished. All right, so there's that. Give that a little check and check. That looks really good. I'm really, really happy with this one. All right, so these will dry and then I will applique them down. Um, Aren't they cute? They're so cute. I hope your blocks are coming along well, too. We are back at the sewing machine. We're going to applique our uh, pieces onto our background blocks. And then the last thing we have to do is just trim up our blocks. Um, I am probably just going to let you watch me sew for a little bit. And if I have any great advice or anything, then I will cut over. Um, otherwise, we'll probably just speed up this section so you can watch me applique. On the ovals and on the circles, um, just like when we were sewing the shape on the interfacing, again, if you keep pressure on your fabric, um, you will be able to turn it as you're going and you won't have to stop as often. Uh, you'll see that I still stop, especially on circles, because sometimes you just have to. Um, but, you know, if you keep the pressure on 
with your fingers on the side there, you should be able to go around at least a portion of the shape without having to stop. The other thing I would mention with the leaves down here and then definitely with this flower, um, when I come to a stopping point, I try to make sure that on, I'm using a zigzag. So when I come to a stopping point, I try to make sure that my needle is on the outside position before I make that turn. Now, I'm not gonna put that little stitch in there like I did when I was sewing on the interfacing. Outside. And then for the concave area, I like being on the inside of the zigzag. And it just kind of helps keep you lined up on the outside of that shape. Alright, now we're just going to trim our strings and we will press these and get them trimmed down to the size they're supposed to be. All right, just like with block one and two, um, I do all of my applique blocks pretty much the same. I press them from the back just so I'm not pressing directly onto the shapes. Um, and then the shapes kind of press down into my ironing board cover. I, I have a few layers of um, Enselbrite underneath my ironing board cover so it's nice and padded it's not like super super soft but it's it's padded so that way I press my shape or I'll press my blocks and um, they still have a little bit of a lift to them now I like my things pretty flat so I press them if you don't like yours flat don't press them so much <laughs> I do have a few strings on the back of this block that I also want to trim off. I'll go ahead and do that before we um, trim it down, just so I don't forget. Okay, so the last thing that we have to do this week is trim down our blocks. And again, I'm just using my eight and a half inch square. You can kind of see where that still was, but I have an inch. Basically an inch and then an inch and a quarter. Well, there's an inch and a quarter and an inch and an eighth. So I'm going to move this just a little ways this way just to get those really good and centered. And then I'm pretty, I'm actually happy with the, I'm happy with the top measurement here. So we're just going to trim this right here. Trim the other one up again. I try to put that center right on the four and the quarter mark, which is half of eight and a half, and then make sure I have a good. I have a good inch here and a good inch here. Yep, that's really pretty good. Okay, so here is block one through four of the Bloom Quilt Sew Along. Um, I am really happy with how these are turning out. Now, I told you in the last video that I was not going to be putting my sashing around these blocks until I get a whole row done. Well, this is a whole row. Um, I'm still not going to put the sashing on them in this video, but I will put together another video in the next week or so. Um, where I just kind of take you through the process of how I'm going to pick out my sashing and how I'm going to get all of that done. So if you are working on the bloom blocks, make sure you tag me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is Laura B Floss Tube and make sure you use our hashtag the bloom QAL 2023. Until next time, happy stitching.